Hi everybody and welcome back to our beautiful and peaceful farm here in central Portugal. In today's video I'm going to be taking you on a tour of our property. It's a three acre farm which is about 1.2 hectares and we purchased the property about a year ago. The place was so overgrown when we bought it and we were in the height of summer so it posed a real fire risk so the first thing we had to do was clear all of the land and make it as safe as possible. So there was lots of very tall grass to be cut, lots of trees to be trimmed to get them away from the ground and we had to do all of this in 30 plus degree heat. It was a pretty brutal first few days owning the property. Since then, we try really hard to keep this place really neat and tidy and safe. So we keep the grass very short all year round with a lawnmower or with a strimmer. But to be honest with you, it's a lot of work doing all of that. And we've had discussions about possibly getting some help to keep the grass low, and that would be in the form of sheep. I think if you own a property of this size with as much grass as we have, you only really have a couple of options and there is a tractor if you still want to do it yourself but that still means you have to do a lot of strimming because the tractor can only get so close to edges and trees and it can't really get into tight spaces. The other option is to get sheep or goats or something that will just go and graze and clear the land. So the property is completely off grid. We have power from a solar system that we have and we have water from a couple of wells but we also collect lots of rainwater. As I said in my introduction video on this channel, we do however want to get this property on grid for both electric and water. For us personally, we feel that having the mix of on grid and off grid gives us the best of both worlds. So this property is packed full of features. We have two different stone buildings, one bigger one, one smaller one, and the plan is to renovate them both over the next three to four years. We also have lots of trees, many oak trees, lots of olive trees, and lots of different fruit trees, as well as multiple water resources, like I said earlier on. So let's kick off the tour by showing you our different water resources and explaining to you how we use them across the property. So one of the most unique things about this property is this huge 30,000 litre water tank. When we came to view the property this was a big tick for us and one of the main reasons we bought the place because we could see the potential in this being a swimming pool in the future which in Portugal is a real benefit when it comes to the summer. We have plans to renovate this later in the year because it is a bit worse to wear and needs some TLC. As you can see, parts of the concrete are crumbling so it needs a new render. Parts of the waterproof paint is flaking off and there's lots of sediment in the bottom that needs cleaning out. So later in the year, we will drain it of all the water, give it a good clean. We're gonna add some nice block seating around the place to make it comfortable to sit in in the summer and then we will re-render and repaint it. We want to also paint the outside of it because you know let's be honest this sort of natural concrete look isn't really very nice so we're going to paint it probably an off-white. We plan on pointing the house which is behind you uh, in lime so I want to try and get a colour that matches the lime to paint this so it'll be nice and bright and make it feel really summery. So at the moment this tank gets filled by rainwater. So the rain falls onto the roof, we have a guttering system which collects it all and it feeds it into this big tank. And you would be surprised when we have a downpour how quickly this fills up. There was a few times in the winter where it was actually going to overflow and I had to let it out 
down into the well so it didn't spill over all the sides. We used the water in here to feed the house uh, for both showering, for washing up, and all we do is we treat it like you would swimming pool water. We monitor the chlorine levels, the pH levels, the alkalinity, and we also make sure that we treat it with an algae side so no algae grows, especially in the summer. Whew. It is hot today. So the water is protected from the sun by this black cover that sits on it. It really does reduce the evaporation. It's also good for stopping debris, you know, bits of leaves and things falling into the water. However, it is really starting to disintegrate under the sun. This was a cover that was here when we bought the place, the previous owner had put it on. And it has done a good job so far, but we really wanted to replace it sooner, but it's not cheap. And because we're planning on renovating the whole pool later in the year, we plan to actually put a cover in that will go over the top of the tank rather than in the water. And we're gonna try and engineer some type of system so it can just roll on and roll off. That's the plan anyway, so watch this space. So you might be wondering, how do we get water from that big 30,000 litre tank into the house? And it's a really simple system that we have here. We simply pump water from that 30,000 litre tank up to a smaller 500 litre tank, which is up on this hill behind me. I think you can see it in the shot. That smaller tank is elevated by seven meters. So that means that naturally from gravity, there's quite a lot of pressure coming out from that tank. That then feeds down and gives us pressure from the water, both into the cold water taps in the house, but also into our boiler to heat that for the hot taps and for the shower. Oh, so this is one of our two wells that we have at the property. I just need to have a quick look where I'm standing here because this is a bit of a hot spot for snakes. We've actually seen quite a few snakes around here. They like to hide underneath the stones. We've seen a huge two meter long uh, skin before as well. So I'm in flip flops, so I just want to be wary. But yeah, this is one of the two wells that we have. Both of them are similar sized. Uh, they're very big, about three, maybe four meters in diameter and they're both about 14 15 meters deep so it's a ton of water so one thing to note is that portugal's been in a drought we had very little rain over the winter and looking at the wells that is really visible you know last year even during the height of the summer even towards the end of the summer the well wasn't actually that low this year we're in july at the moment and I have to look down about 10 meters before I even see the water level. So it's a bit concerning. One thing that I love about this well that we don't have on the other one is that it still has the traditional like equipment, machinery, I don't know what you'd call it, but the cogged system where you'd have an animal turn it and walk around the well that would turn the cogs, which would turn the wheel and pull water up. It's pretty amazing. So this is the second well. Like I said before, it's a similar size to the first one. The water level actually appears higher in this one because both wells are filled by the water table and this one is lower down on the property. We've never actually used the water from this well for anything. We've tested it, we know that it's okay. Our plan for both wells is that once we are growing a lot more food, we will set up an irrigation system which will use the water from the wells to feed the plants and the trees. So I'm down at the bottom end of the property and as you can see behind me, there's just this big open space where it's a bit weird. There's nothing really used in this space. We are right next to the second stone building we have, the smaller one. And Victoria and I both thought that we would like to do more with this space. And one idea we had was that we could dig out a huge area and make a big pond. Maybe we could have some nice reeds and plants around the edge, possibly even some ducks. I think it would be a really nice feature and a really nice addition to the property. At the moment, that's just a bit of a 
pipe dream, a little bit of an idea to consider a mull over for the future, because with things like that, there's a lot to think about, you know, mostly being how would we retain the water? Where would the water come from? How would we keep the water clear and not just covered in algae and becoming like a swamp? But they're definitely hurdles I'd like to overcome because the thought of having a big pond and getting to walk around that with the dogs every day is really nice. So we are at that horrendous time of the day where the sun is as high as it can be, it's right over the top of me and it's about 38 degrees. Awful for me out here filming, but amazing for our solar system. And at the moment, our house runs exclusively off of this solar system. For us, we consider it to be quite a modest system. Other people might think it's quite big. Uh, we have four quite big solar panels and between them, they can generate 1.8 kilowatts of energy. So the panels send that energy inside to our lithium batteries where it stores the excess energy for us to use in the evening when there is no sunshine. So this is a 48 volt solar system. So indoors we have an inverter and what that allows us to do is take the power in 48 volts and convert it into 230 or 240 volts, which is standard in Europe. That's what most appliances and most household electrics run from. So as you can see, the panels and their frame are currently sat on breeze blocks. It was a real makeshift solution because at the time we had these fitted, it all happened very quickly. So I just had to get them raised on something and secured. Surprisingly, the breeze blocks have actually done really well. We've had some huge storms here with crazy winds and this hasn't shifted a millimeter. For us, this is just temporary. I do already have some huge concrete curbs that I bought and my plan is to bolt this frame all the way through those curbs, put some type of edging around here on this landscape fabric and fill it with gravel so it just looks nice and finished because at the moment it looks a little bit scruffy. So now I'm at one of my favorite spots of the property. It's this big, wide terraced area with nice stone terraced walls, lots of oak trees in this space, which creates loads of shade. And it's just a really relaxing place to come and sit in the shade and hear the wind just rustling through all the oak tree leaves. And this is actually the site where we're gonna build a small cabin or a tiny home, if you like, later this year. The reason we're building the tiny home is because the main house, which is just over there, we want to renovate that either end of next year, maybe early the year after, and we just want somewhere where we can come and sleep that can be clean and tidy, and we can close ourselves off from the renovation. I think also when you're doing a renovation, you know, there are times where you just need to leave the tools out and just leave it messy. If you're living in there, even if you try and be as tidy as possible, it's just, counterproductive to be packing up and tidying up stuff every day, especially if it's a job that's gonna take you a week or two. You just need to leave everything out, work up until the last minute, stop, put down the tools, and just come back again the next day and just have to pick it up and go straight on. I'm really looking forward to building this cabin. It's one of those projects where we are literally just gonna have raw earth here. And by the end of the project, we will have a fully completed watertight building that we can live in and yeah it's just going to be so transformative of the place. Initially I'd planned on building this cabin out of wood. It's such a nice material to work with and I think it would just feel really solid plus it would look really fitting uh, buried here in the oak trees. However since I costed up um, the materials and we're planning this project the price of wood has gone crazy in Portugal. So the price rise in wood has kind of made me rethink what I want to do with it. Um, I'm now looking at alternatives, possibly having a metal frame, but I'm still looking at it and costing it up. If I do build out of metal and have a metal exterior, I will definitely still use wood on the inside, just because I think it makes it feel really warm and cozy. 
So this is what we call our pasture, or it's just a big field really. Uh, it's walled with all these old granite stones. It's beautiful. Uh, it's a lovely space for the dogs to run around and have fun without any obstructions in the way. And the plan for this in the future is we want to have a big vegetable garden up at the top end. So it's a bit nearer to the well for irrigation. Uh, we would also like to have a greenhouse on here. And also we haven't definitely decided yet, but we're thinking we might get some sheep in the future, maybe between two or four sheep, just to keep the grasses down around the property. And if we do get them then probably their home would be somewhere in here obviously they would graze around the entire property but you need somewhere which is their home where they can have a shelter and that would probably be down here in the bottom end of the field so behind me is the wall on the edge of the pasture and you can see it's actually two walls so there's kind of one wall at the front which is about three and a half foot there's a wall at the back which is about seven foot that's the actual property border and in the middle there's about a two foot maybe three foot in places gully that runs down the middle of it we were speaking to our neighbor once and he was telling us that back in the day that used to have water flowing through it but unfortunately i couldn't work out with the language barrier where he said the water was coming from it's definitely not had any water run down it in a while because i think for years it's just been filled with things that have been buried, rubbish the previous owners had. We found lots of glass bottles, things like this in there when we cleaned it out. When we viewed the property, we actually couldn't see about three quarters of this wall because it was all so overgrown. The wall actually runs from the top end of the property right down to the bottom end. So it's a huge granite wall. And as you can see, it gets really overrun with vines and overgrown trees from the neighboring properties. I actually, believe it or not, cut all this back a few months ago and as you can see it's already taking over. Like in this part behind me, there are a few areas where the wall is broken and it needs some TLC. I definitely want to fix things like this but to be honest, these are jobs for far down the line. There are much bigger and important jobs that need doing like renovating the house for example, but that's okay. There's nothing structural that's going to cause problems for waiting, they'll still be here in the future. So I'm now in our olive grove, uh, just hiding in the shade. And yeah, this is a lovely space. I really enjoy walking through here with the dogs every day. It's a real enclosed space and it feels very calm. And the dogs love running around here. They tear around in between the trees, chasing each other. So we have about 40 olive trees in this field. Across the whole property, we have around 75, something like that. Uh, they're actually looking a bit scruffy at the moment. In November, we did pick all the olives and we trimmed up all the trees but they grow back so quickly. They've probably grown about six foot since November. So we're just gonna leave it for now. And then when it gets to picking season again, uh, towards the winter, we'll trim them all again. So in my first introduction video, I had lots of people commenting, asking me if we had any fruit trees here at the property. And the answer is yes, we do. We have lots, but we definitely want to be planting and growing more in the future. So now I'm gonna quickly whip around the property and show you the different types that we have. So this is the smaller of the two stone buildings we have here. It's super cute. It's only 25 square meters, so it's quite small, but it's lovely. You know, two little windows on the front. It has another window on the side, so you get lots of light in there. Definitely needs a lot of work. And I think our plan is going to be the following. We're going to build the cabin first. We have somewhere to live. We are going to come down here and potentially renovate this building first because 
it's a very similar construction to the main house except for the main house is much bigger so we're trying to look at this as potentially a learning curve you know we've never really worked with stone before i've never replaced a roof before so there's lots of things here that i can do on a smaller scale if there's mistakes i learn them here it's also not quite as overwhelming and it means that by the time I come around to doing the main renovation on the big house, nothing will be new to me and I'll be quite experienced at doing it. So the plan for this building is to effectively renovate this into a kind of one room studio. We want to put a bathroom in the corner and then maybe have a sofa that can pull out into a bed. So when we have guests stay, they can be at the other end of the property, have their own space, but essentially Victoria and I want to use this space for ourselves as kind of a music room for me, as well as an office space, and we'll also be able to use it to work out in. So it's gonna be quite a multifunctional kind of second bedroom or third bedroom, if you will. Like I said outside, I want to use this building as a learning curve before I do the renovations on the main house. So I'm going to basically do everything in here that I want to do up there, just on a smaller scale. So that's going to mean replacing the ridge beams, the rafters, all of the roof tiles, because on this building, they're rotting. Roof tiles are already falling off and there's water ingress. Also want to replace the single glazed windows and replace the door. We'll need to put down a proper floor, either a wood floor or tiles. And I definitely want to get rid of all the cement mortar that's between the granite in here because it's definitely caused damp in a number of areas. And I want to replace that with a lime mortar. I'll probably leave one, possibly two walls exposed with the pointing so you can really see the lovely granite wall. But the others I'm going to plaster and try and get them nice and smooth to make the place feel bright and a bit more modern. So here on the outside of the building, the plan will be to remove all of the cement mortar like I will on the inside and replace it with lime. I will also have a veranda coming down here off the front to make a really nice shaded space out the front of the building and keep the sun from beating down on the inside. So the last stop on this property tour is the main stone house that you can see behind me. This building is, well, we think a fantastic size. It's just perfect for us. It's roughly around 80 square meters, uh, which is kind of the size of like your normal good sized, actually one bedroom flat. So like I said in my last video, this shade sale really is just a temporary solution to give us a bit of cover from the sun. But in the future, when we get around to doing the renovation, we're gonna have a permanent veranda that will be tiled along the top. So that will come all the way down to kind of in line where I am with the extension. And it's gonna come all the way from the edge of the building here. So it's basically doubling our living space. And here in Portugal, you know, you can be outside pretty much nine to 10 months of the year. So having that space outside to use for the majority of the year really will be incredible. We haven't actually done much internally yet since we bought the place. When we first moved in, it was just two big empty rooms. In the main room, there was a small sink in the corner with kind of a makeshift concrete uh, worktop uh, and just an old stove in the center of the room. There was also no insulation in the roof and it made the building so hot inside. We moved in in the height of summer, so I had to come up with a solution very quickly. And the easiest thing I decided was to get some rolls of rock wall insulation that I could get up and stuff between the roof rafters it made such a difference instantly. So the roof in here is stable, but it's not the most attractive and long-term, it's not the greatest. They've used uh, pine. It's not been treated properly at the right time. So it's all starting to bend and warp. Uh, our plan is to eventually replace the roof, have lovely exposed, big thick rafters uh, with a nice tongue and groove roof on the top. So like I said before, we are planning on building the cabin and renovating the other stone building first. So that means realistically, we're not going to get round to renovating this probably for another 18 months or so. But to give you an idea of what to expect and what we have in mind, our plan is for the main room to have a big open space room that will be a kitchen, 
living room and dining space. We'll then obviously have the separate bathroom in there and then we'll have the separate bedroom next door. So that's our plans for the inside. On the exterior, like I say, we're going to have a veranda come out here. We're hopefully going to raise the roof by a couple of foot because at the moment on this front end, it's very low. And if we continue the roof angle from the roof, it will come to about this high here. So I need to bump it up by two foot to give me some head space at the front. We'll then retile the whole roof because lots of the roof tiles at the moment are knackered, they're broken, they don't fit together particularly well. Luckily, we don't have any leaks and fingers crossed that stays the same this winter. We will also be removing this deck behind me, laying down a nice concrete floor and then tiling on top of that. And finally, one of the longest and certainly the most tedious part of this renovation is going to be removing the existing mortar. There's some earth mortar and there's some made of cement. There's also concrete that's just been splattered up the wall and I need to try and get that off lots of the faces of the granite. So once that's removed, I'll need to get a pressure washer, clean off all the stone because I don't think it's ever been cleaned in the hundreds of years that it's been here. And then the final thing to do will be to repoint it with a lovely lime mortar and really bring this place back to life again. So thank you for joining me as I've taken you round our farm here in Portugal. As you can probably tell by the light in my face, the sun is about to dip over the hill in the distance. So I think I'm going to end the video here. So thanks for watching. I hope you can join me in my next video where I'm going to be trying to get this area up around the house all fenced and get some nice gates in to make this place secure for the dogs and allow us to relax out here a bit more. And for everybody who commented on my last video uh, telling me your animal rescue stories, thank you so much. They were really heartwarming. And for everybody who was asking about Poppy, uh, she's doing really well. Thank you for asking. She's fully vaccinated and she's booked in to be neutered in the autumn. She's also got a small hernia, so she's going to have that popped in back at the same time. Uh, we're waiting until the autumn because we thought it would be a bit uncomfortable for her to be wearing a big cone in the 40 degree summer heat. So I'm gonna leave you here. The temperature is now dropping, so I'm gonna go get Victoria and the dogs and we'll take them for their evening stroll so they can run around and burn off some energy. Uh, I hope to see you on the next video.